What's up YouTube, Webbers Viper coming at you today with Q&A number 49. Once again, today's Q&A questions are brought to you by my, by my good friend Dr. Patrician84. And, and as per usual, before we get into the questions, there's a quick comment based on something from the last video. Uh, the flipper robot you were thinking of was in fact Chaos 2. I thought it was something like that. The only two-time UK champion. My favourite was Hypnodisc. It sucks that it never won anything apart from the most original entry award in Series 3. That's fair enough. Now, without further ado, let's get on to the questions. One, I don't remember if I asked this, but have you thought about rebuilding the very first pendulum deck you ever made from 2014 and 2015? Um, I would certainly be willing to give that a go if I could remember anything about what was in them. I mean, as I recall, I did those profiles on your original channel. So if you still have them, I could probably, that I could copy from that and go from there and I'd be willing to give it another shot. If not, then I'm afraid those decks are lost to the ages. Uh, the rest of my questions are about all but one of my top 10 favorite traps since I already asked you about Mirror Force. Okay, that's fair enough. So two, thoughts on Imperial Iron Wall. So I do read that people were playing Imperial Iron Wall back when banishing started becoming a huge thing. I think that was like when Cosmos got introduced that they, that it started coming back in. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. So yeah, it's pretty decent. I like some of the synergy it's got with like some of the old synchro decks as well. Like I think I recall Junk was trying. Like I recall some Junk decks played Imperial Iron Wall simply because it just meant they can keep reusing Quillbot Hedgehog over and over again, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's, Imperial Iron Wall is decent, there's a lot of like niche things that you can do with it. I think one of the more interesting things I like about Imperial Iron Wall is chaining Imperial Iron Wall to a Law of Darkness. Because you're because if a player goes a Law of Darkness and Imperial Iron Wall is chained, you resolve as much as you, you resolve by drawing to, resolve by drawing two. If you do have a dark that you can legally banish, all you have to do is reveal is reveal that you do in fact have a dark in your hand that you can banish, and you get to keep your hand. Which is cool. Three, thoughts on Magic Cylinder, which for me is a love-hate card. I'm in exactly the same boat, my friend. I also am a love-hate fan of Magic Cylinder. Love using, love using it on someone. Hate it being used against me. Specifically hated that one time that you decided to hit me for a stupidly high amount of damage from at least a minimum 6k Cyber Dark Dragon. I find it quite interesting that most of my love-hate cards stem from things that you've done to Cyber Dark Dragon. That's strange. But, but overall, Magic Cylinder, definitely a very fun card. I like that it's got its own animation in Master Duel, and, I've watched, and I have seen quite a few funny replays of Magic Cylinder. I think probably the funniest I saw with Magic Cylinder was a one player going against a sprite player, he baited out as all the sprite effects, tripped the entire thing, made a huge div and cut on it, attacked for game. His opponent had one back row, and conveniently, it was a magic cylinder, and he just ended up killing himself. <laughs> Hilarious. Four thoughts on fiendish chain. Fiendish chain was probably fiendish chain was very good back in the day when when it came to effect negation. So. Yeah. But now it's essentially at the point it's just been power crept by so many better things. Sorry. But overall, I do like it for its nostalgia. It's just kind of a shame that it's been a bit power crept. I will be interested to see if they might make a new version of Fiendish Chain in the upcoming Jack Atlas structure deck, though. That'd be cool to see. Five. Thoughts on Starlight Road? I do quite... Yeah, I quite like Starlight Road. It's pretty... It's a very nice defensive card, like protecting yourself from anything that would but nuke two or more of your cards, and then you get to summon Stardust Dragon for free. I kind of like how you used to play it back in DM as a way to counteract the negative effect of Eternal Soul. The downside, the downside is because it's already destroyed, you don't get to summon Stardust Dragon, but still, pretty, but still a pretty unique way of doing so. Six. Thoughts on Waking the Dragon. Definitely a very interesting card. Lots of flexibility in what you can use it for. Just summoning an 
like summoning an extra deck monster that either works with your strategy or just something ge or just something generically strong that's a d pain for your opponent to deal with. Pretty useful, just kind of depends how you choose to use it. Alright guys. Seven. Thoughts on Solemn Strike. Another love-hate card which I swear Express Gaming always sees. Um, yeah, I have mixed... Yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of Solemn Strike. That, can, that card became an absolute very quick problem for Pendulum since Strike stops inherent special summons, which unfortunately Pendulum summoning is, so back in the day. If I got hit with a Solemn Strike, that was pretty much my game completely over. But I did like how after a few sets, when the when the Zark Magicians came out, I got like a built-in way of being able to play through the Solemn Strike, because all I had to do is just Pendulum Summon a Black Fang within that Pendulum Summon. Then if I got hit with a Solemn Strike, I'm just like, cool, affect the Black Fang target, a Dark a Spellcaster in my graveyard, resurrect it. And, so, and it can also target itself, which is great. So it was really useful on that point. But still, Strike has been a big problem for myself and a lot of players in the game ever since its release. 8. Thoughts on Storming Mirror Force? Uh, my opinion, probably Storming, Storming Mirror Force is probably the second, is probably the best variation of the original Mirror Force. Consider, considering that it's just basically works exactly the same way but since they go to the hand instead of getting destroyed it can get around a lots of it gets around cards that have the immunity to destruction and gets around stuff that also benefits from destruction which is pretty useful nine thoughts on drowning mirror force um similar to storming i like that it's a way that it gets around I like that it's a way that gets around things that benefit or are immune to destruction. I think my only downside is the same as with most people with it, that it only works on direct... My problem is that it only works on direct attack, so it's like very, very situational for it to work. But works really well on a deck like, say, your Senju, in which cards just... The monsters just bounce back to the hand of the end phase, which puts you more clear for it. But naturally, if it, considering that Drowning Mirror Force does put cards back straight into the main deck, it kind of would understand they'd want to have it, wanted to have a bit more of a restriction. Because if it was just like a regular Mirror Force that just says, when you, if your opponent wants to close an attack, shuffle all attack position monsters your opponent controls into the deck, that would be ridiculously stupid and they'd probably have to limit it. And question 10. Fault to my absolute favourite trap despite its drawback, Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul, I definitely think, was a great addition to the Dark Magician deck. Nice, gives Dark Magician a nice little protection effect, and lets you search out the spell. Free, spe free special summon of it, which lets you trigger off Dark Magical Circle, and lets you search out uh, Dark Magic Attack, so you've got a free ball. You've got, got a free back row right there you can easily search. It's kind of a shame that it doesn't let you grab them from your graveyard, which is a bit of a shame. But overall, very decent card. Very difficult to deal with in tandem with Dark Magician and the Dragon Knight because they give those a bit of protection on each other, so you basically can't get rid of either of them. Let's do the fun thing of what I considered doing, which was just play Trap Eater, when you just inherently special summon by sacking off the Eternal Souls and then everything dies. <laughs> Funny. And on that note, guys, that's all the questions I have today. So thank you, Dark Magician ACL, for your questions. Very amusing, as always. And if anyone else has any questions for me, I do these Q&As every Wednesday, UK time, morning or afternoon, depending on my schedule. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.